Welcome everyone to Gamer Milk. Today we get specs on the RTX 3050, the release date specs and pricing of the 3080 Ti, and next gen Ryzen and Radeon GPUs are set to get a huge performance jump again. But first, if you're like many who love reading a good book, but you just can't find the time, I've got the answer with today's sponsor. Blinkist, the app that takes thousands of non-fiction books and condenses them into short 15-minute snippets. Not only that, but they offer the option to either read or listen like an audiobook, so you're able to learn something new regardless of what you're doing. Plus, they now offer full-length audiobooks up to 65% off for members. So don't wait and join over 14 million users today. And the first 100 people who go to Blinkist.com slash GamerMeld get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off on the full membership after, so make sure to check that out. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, it looks like resident leaker copite 7 Kimmy has come through yet again. In a recent post on Twitter, the leaker shared specs for an upcoming NVIDIA GPU the RTX 3050. Now, right off the bat, we can see that the 3050 is an RTX card, which means it'll likely have real-time ray tracing. At least that's what separated the RTX and GTX cards with Turing. Plus, that's obviously a departure from NVIDIA's 1600 naming scheme. This could actually mean all cards are set to come with real-time ray tracing, which shows just how serious NVIDIA is invested in the tech. Anyway, moving back to the post, according to copite 7 Kimmy, the RTX 3050 is built on the GA107-300 and is set to come with 2,304 CUDA cores as well as a TGP of 90 watts. Unfortunately, he didn't give us any more information, but according to video cards, the 3050, along with the 3060 and 3060 Ti, are all set to launch early next year. They're hearing closer to a January or February launch, but there doesn't seem to be a final date yet. All in all, we know AMD has something to challenge it with their Navi 22 GPU, but it'll likely depend on when that ends up coming out. Next up, we have a report on NVIDIA's RTX 3080 Ti. The story originally comes from HKEPC and later posted by Tech Power Up. And as you can see, according to them, the upcoming Ti model is set for release in January of next year. Not only that, but they were able to confirm some of the recent specs we saw from Copite 7 Kimmy. According to them, the 3080 Ti comes with the same core count as the 3090, as well as 20 gigabytes of GDDR6X on a 320-bit bus and a TGP of 320 watts. Now, get this. According to HKEPC, the 3080 Ti will be priced at 999 US dollars. So this is obviously set to be a response to AMD's newly announced RX 6900 XT. Unfortunately for Nvidia, they're in a really tight spot. They can't really make it more powerful yet cheaper than the 3090 because it'll be a big screw you to anyone who purchased it. Not to mention the fact that they don't have much wiggle room in the GA102. Really though, it has to suck for those who purchased the 3090 regardless, given they effectively paid $500 for 4GB of VRAM. That obviously sucks either way you slice it, but that's not all. It obviously won't be faster than the 3090, so it still won't be the best GPU out there. I mean, the 6900 XT still basically beats the 3090. You could argue that it's closer to a tie, but still, Nvidia certainly isn't happy with a tie. Lastly for today, we already have some information on AMD's next-gen RDNA 3-based GPUs and Zen 4-based CPUs. Now, I know what you're thinking. The RX 6000 isn't even out yet, and we're talking about the RX 7000 series? Well, I can't help it, because during an interview from the street with AMD's executive vice president, Rick Bergman, he discussed just that. He actually went over a few interesting topics, so let's get to it. Starting things off, he was asked about AMD's upcoming Zen 4 CPUs. I assume they'll be called Ryzen 6000, and in his reply, Rick Bergman stated, quote, if you looked at our technical document on Zen 3, it was this long list of things that we did to get that 19%. Zen 4 is going to have a similar long list of things, where you look at everything from the caches to the branch prediction, the number of gates in the execution pipeline. Everything is scrutinized to squeeze more performance out. Certainly, process opens an additional door for us to better performance per watt and so on, and we'll take advantage of that as well. So yeah, it sounds like AMD's aiming for yet another double-digit IPC increase with Ryzen 6000. And actually, that last part makes it sound like they plan to get even more than the average 19% AMD got out of Zen 3 thanks to the upcoming node shrink. 
Basically, while Intel is promising that their upcoming Rocket Lake CPUs will get a nice IPC increase next year, AMD will be coming back hard yet again. It's almost like Intel can't get any breathing room, which is obviously great for competition. Then again, they had years to take a break before Zen. In the next interesting part of the interview, he was asked about their upcoming RDNA 3 GPUs. Specifically, if AMD plans to get the 50% performance per watt improvements that RDNA 2 delivered. And in his answer, he flat said that yes, they have the same commitment with RDNA 3, which is seriously huge. To think of getting the same uplift again. Of course, don't forget that the 6800 XT got much of its performance from upping the cores of the 5700 XT. But remember, that only gets it to around a 2080 Ti, not 40% faster or more. That's where the performance per watt improvements come in, and clearly, they plan to do it again. The last bit of information is in regards to AMD's ray tracing performance, and as you can see, he states that their goal was 1440p to have a great experience. The thing about this is that he likely means while having high frame rates. Plus, that was only the goal. AMD could have easily surpassed it. I guess take that for what you'd like. Ultimately, it looks like AMD isn't stopping anytime soon, and unless Nvidia and Intel don't want to get left in their dust, they'd better do something, and fast. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's next-gen processors? And do you think they'll actually be able to do what they've done in the past again? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!